Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. In this video, we're going to look at SageMaker Colab. Oh, sorry, SageMaker Studio Lab, a new launch from AWS reInvent. This is a really cool one, uh, something that a lot of us have been waiting for for a long time, as we can easily create notebook environments to go and experiment on CPU or GPU without having to sign up for an AWS account and without any complexity in setting things up. So this is really cool and I'm gonna demonstrate it with uh, hugging face models. Okay, let's get started. Studio Lab is in preview, so you should go to the page, uh, sign up for it and you should get access pretty quickly. Uh, you know, I got access in a matter of hours, so it should be fast. And then of course you can go and sign in Okay, and please note you are not using your AWS account here. You're using uh, your uh, email and that's it. So um, if you have no AWS account, um, that works, right? Super easy, no credit card. It's all free, by the way. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. So we can create different runtimes. You can create CPU runtimes or GPU runtimes. Um, so we'll start with our CPU and uh, we get some resources here. Uh, and yes, we see hugging face. So that's pretty cool. Uh, what, what do we have here? We can click and okay, it's a quick tour notebook that we'll be able to, to run once we have an environment. All right, so let's first create this environment. I'll just click on start runtime. It takes a few seconds to spin up and then we can go and open notebooks. Okay, so let's wait for that. Okay, it took about maybe 20, 30 seconds. And so now my uh, CPU runtime is running and I can use it for 12 hours in a row. Okay, so that should be more than enough for, uh, for your working day, right? Um, of course, if you're done prior to that, you can stop it and, and release resources. Or if you just let it run for 12 hours, then it shuts down automatically, okay? And you won't lose any files, as you will see. Files are persistent, all right? Okay, so let's, uh, yeah, why don't we copy that to the project, see what happens. Aha, uh -huh. animations, copy from GitHub. Uh, yeah, just take the notebook, all right. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, so that was simple. Um, it's imported, we can pick our kernel and there's a, a default Python kernel, we'll just stick to that one for now. Uh, and I'll show you in a minute how you can create your own kernel, okay? All right, so we could go and, and run this example, uh, but it's, it's a little long, so I'll let you, I'll let you run this. Um, I'm gonna run some, uh, some of my own examples. But first, I'd like to figure out what this environment is. So let me fire up a terminal. Okay, and uh, so what do we have here? How much memory do we have, first of all? Okay, yeah, so we have 15 gigs, which is not bad at all. Uh, and what about CPUs? Ah, you weren't expecting this, right? No machine running for now. Okay, so what do we see? So we have, yeah, we have four cores. Okay, reasonably fast ones too. Okay, yeah, so we have four vCPUs and 16 gigs, which is, which is pretty good. Uh, I've got the uh, instance types here. Let me zoom in. So it's equivalent to a T3 Excel um, Studio instance. Okay, that's it's kind of it's yeah it's kind of better than what you got in Studio. I think Studio by default was T3 Medium, if I'm not wrong. Anyway, okay, so that's that's not bad. We have what we need here to work. Okay, let's run a quick demo. So I've got a very simple, uh, a very simple pipeline demo with Hugging Face. Uh, and I've created those notebooks before. And as you see, they're, they're still around, right? So even though my environment was, uh, my runtime was shut down, um, my files are persisted. Although it's probably safe to commit them to Git or save them somewhere, but yeah, haven't lost anything so far. 
Um, yeah, so if I run CUDA here, it's not going to work because we don't have a GPU. So I could go and pip install what I need. Let's go and do that. Should take a second. And yeah, then I'll just run my pipeline. See how that goes. But as you can see, it's Jupyter Lab, right? It's super simple. And yeah, that worked. Okay. Oh, I'm not sure I'm 99.85% positive so far, but okay. All right. And yeah, we have uh, we have the debugger integration here as well, which could come in handy. Okay, here we are. So that's that's pretty nice. I mean, so far I really like the fact that you know no nothing uh, about I am nothing about S3 buckets. Uh, you you don't need to know the first thing about AWS to use this, which is really how it should be, right? So well done on that. Okay, um, why don't we try and create a Conda environment? Uh, and just for the record, and that's going to be a, a minor complaint, uh, we have a getting started doc here, which is generally quite useful. Uh, it tells you how to install packages, some sample notebooks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then, uh, yes, it tells you how to create an environment, okay? Except uh, the command that they give you doesn't work, <laughs> right? And I'll prove that, okay? So if you're stuck here, I'll fix it in a second. But if you try and do this, nope, it won't work. So um, what you should do instead is this. Okay, and that one works, right? So let's create an environment called Transformers PT for PyTorch with Python 3.9. Okay, uh, yes, please install all that good stuff. Okay, and if you're not familiar with Conda, uh, this is a really good way to keep your dependencies separate. So if you want a, a TensorFlow environment, that's one environment. If you want a PyTorch environment, that's another one. If you want a clean, let's say, SKLR environment, that's a third one, right? So um, yeah, if you're new to this, please uh, read a little bit about Conda and, uh, and create those things correctly. Um, it'll save you a lot of uh, headaches. So we can just uh, activate this environment now. All right. Okay, now I can go and install some of my dependencies. Okay, so all my dependencies have been added now. And I'm going to install IPy kernel so that I can add this new Conda environment as a kernel in my Jupyter notebooks. Okay. All right, and now this should add it to Jupyter. Okay. So let's see if I have to restart the environment or not. Um, so let's go here. Yes, it looks like I have to restart it. Okay, so let me shut down the environment and restart it again. Okay, so I just stopped the CPU runtime, uh, launched it again, and I can see my new um, environments, right? My new Conda, Conda of has been uh, has been updated here, so I should be able to use it here. Okay, yes. Right, so now I don't need to go and, and pip install if I just go and... Uh, clear all that stuff and run it again should work without any need to set up anything fingers crossed all right okay that worked all right so just uh, make sure you create your environment right uh, make sure you add it to uh, Jupyter and you're good to go right and again, I strongly, strongly encourage you to use those. Otherwise, uh, you'll just make a mess of your uh, Python environment, which is what I do all the time. Okay, so here's the CPU environment. So why don't we, again, uh, stop this and try a GPU runtime? All right, I'll see you in a second. My GPU runtime is up, and we can see we're limited to four hours here. Um, which again should be enough. 
for uh, experimentation and, and testing, right? Um, so we can't train uh, for more than four hours. So let's open the project. Okay, so let's just go here. Oh yeah, let's check that we have a GPU now. Um, so what do we have here? Oh, we have a Tesla T4 with 16 gigs. And yeah, we could open a terminal again and try to take a peek at this. Yep. So let's take a look at our GPU. All right, CUDA 11.4, Tesla T4, 16 gigs, right? That's a nice GPU. How much memory do we have on this machine? Okay, we still have 16 gigs. And what about the CPU? So how many do we have here? Yeah, it's the same, right? So we still have four vCPUs. So still four vCPUs, 16 gigs, and a T4. Which is pretty much what you would get with... Uh, G4DN Excel here, right? Okay, so these are good, good environments. Uh, we should be able to get some work done here. Let's train a bigger notebook now. And this is one of the examples from the uh, Hugging Face course, which I cannot recommend enough. And uh, I'll put the link in the video description. So here we're fine tuning a distilled BERT model for uh, binary classification. And uh, we're doing this on the IMDb movie review data set, which includes positive and negative movie reviews. Okay, so we have all the dependencies that we need here, and we can just go and run everything. Run all cells. Okay, so it will download the data set, tokenize it, start from the, the pre trained model on the hub. And we set up our training arguments. We're training for a single epoch. And we define our accuracy metric. And then the trainer object, putting everything together. And then we call and go train, right? And it works out of the box, right? So uh, it's going to run for 18 minutes. So we're not going to wait for that. We'll just keep it running. And uh, yeah, that's all there is to it. So uh, works out of the box. I like that. And again, zero AWS stuff to to set up. So it's uh, you know hosted notebooks the way the way they should be. Now, having said that, how would we work with um, AWS here? So if I'm going to the terminal here. Yeah, so the uh, AWS command line is installed. So uh, of course, you know, you would just go and uh, call AWS configure and you know, enter your access key, secret key, default region name, right? And and of course, you could uh, you could issue uh, AWS uh, command line uh, commands. Uh, you could install the Boto three SDK and do the same uh, from Python. So one thing we cannot do is install native dependencies. So if we try and call apt get update, okay, it says permission denied. And then if I try to sudo, it says sudo command, command not found. So <laughs> chicken and egg problem. So um, that could be a problem if you have Python libraries that need uh, native dependencies. So I'm not sure what the what the solution here is, um, but I can't think of one right now. If I have any uh, ideas, just uh, you know, post them in the in the comments. Uh, but yeah, uh, I don't see how that would work. So uh, hopefully, you don't need any fancy Python library with uh, with native stuff. Otherwise, uh, you'll, you'll be kind of stuck. But I guess that's a, that's an okay restriction for uh, for a totally free environment. Um, and if you need bigger things, then uh, you can move on to um, uh, SageMaker Studio, for example, uh, that will let you install uh, native dependencies. Um, and speaking of which, there is no seamless uh, way to migrate 
uh, those notebooks to studio. Uh, maybe that's coming later. Um, so if you need to do that, of course, you could use, you know, Git workflow, you know, push your notebooks and then uh, clone them again in studio uh, or download the notebooks and upload them again. But uh, yeah, at some point, I think it'd be nice to have some kind of, a, you know, right click, send to studio kind of thing. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's missing for now. But okay, you know, I'm always complaining, as you probably know, right? So this is making progress. Okay, yeah, we see the, the logging and the checkpointing, etc. So, you know, that's going to work. I've run this a few times and yeah, it does, it does complete. So there you go. That's Studio Lab. You can sign up. Super easy. You don't need to know anything about it. Well, yes, uh, nothing about IM, S3, etc., which will probably come as a relief to some of you. And you can create your CPU and GPU runtime uh, with a fair amount of resources, as we saw. So you should be able to get some work done. It's not a toy. Uh, it's a, it's a definitely usable for your daily work. Okay, so go and try it. Uh, if you have questions, you can uh, post them uh, in the video. And um, until I see you with more content, keep learning. Bye-bye.